This is the glo <laughs> this is the glory and majesty of Executive Suite. But uh, before we really get started with the gameplay, I do want to test out to make sure that the giveaway functionality of Blipbot ends up working. Uh, it's not uh, it's not the Scorp bot that was recommended to me, but this one actually worked, uh, and so I was rather pleased with that. Uh, the first thing I'm going to give away, or I'm going to attempt to give away. Now, some of these keys are old, and uh, as we learned on Monday, not. All of them, many of them, but not all of them functioned right. So if you win the giveaway and you end up getting a, like a dud key, <laughs> Mary grab this, right? Uh, the first thing I'm going to give away is, or attempt to give away, is a key for Rogue State. I've recorded that quite a bit on my channel, and I do have a key in storage for Rogue State. Uh, and so I think that'll be the first fun thing I'm going to end up giving away. Now, I believe, according to Blipbot, you have to be following the channel or being subscribed to the channel, which I don't have a subscription thing because I'm not a partner, in order to actually enter the raffle, but we'll actually end up seeing. So I'm going to run this for a minute or so, uh, maybe two minutes, and if you want to enter, uh, what you end up doing is uh, typing exclamation point grimness in the chat. Let me actually see whether it entered. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, good. It actually is registering all of you. Pretty quick at banning people still. It's pretty nice. Ah. Uh. Hey everyone, you know, free stuff, right? Now I gotta ask, does Blipbot actually send you folks a whisper whenever you do exclamation point grimness, or is that something only in like Scorpbot or whatever? Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Alright, thanks for the confirmation. Let's see how many people are in this thing now. 27. All right. I'll let it go for another minute. Sure thing, Anton. Sure thing. We'll be uh, back to playing Daggerfall uh, next week. It's going to be on Monday. Uh, we might do it a bit earlier. Uh, simply because I've been waking up so early. Uh, and I've been going to bed uh, relatively early. That I don't know whether I could do an 8 p.m. to midnight broadcast my time for a bit. Okay. All right, everyone. I even think I'm including this in the local recording as well. So, hello, everyone watching on YouTube. You get to enjoy the giveaway action. No, evidence self, I did not. I caught him broadcasting on RimWorld a few days back, and he's been chatting and discussing. He's talked a little bit with me about the Switch, uh, but he hasn't asked me any, uh, you know, key questions. And such, I, uh, I opened the door. I thought if he wants to ask stuff. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm doing pretty good, Marvin. I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. Doing pretty good, thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and bring this raffle to an end. All right. How about that? So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and whisper you uh, the key for uh, Rogue State. There you go. Now, if you... For whatever reason, you know, hey, hey, Blump, how's it going, man? You know what? I like your name being green. You talk so little anyway that it's perfectly fine. Do let me know if the key worked, though. Uh, I won't give you a new one if it doesn't work. I'm just fucking curious, right? <laughs> and uh, these giveaways will be sprinkled throughout the course of the day. I've got some postcards that I'm going to be giving away as well, that I'll do a personalized signature for, and I will ship you. You know, I'll pay for the stamps myself, and I will mail you a Christmas postcard, uh, if you are so interested. Uh, and I'll be sprinkling those about. There's no set times for them, because I don't want people just coming in for the fucking giveaways. They're here as a, uh, as a, as a treasure uh, for viewers who are joining me today. All right, everyone. I think we'll finally get started with Executive Suite, as I have noted. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and recap. This is a longtime feature 
on my channel. It's an old DOS game, came out in 1982. It's an interactive choose-your-own-adventure story. Uh, yeah, if it itself, I will fucking, I'll do whatever, I mean, shipping internationally doesn't cost that much. I'll do what I can. I'll, I'll look up what postage will cost for it, and I'll fucking stick stamps. I mean, I've gotten postcards from Italy before and other places like that, from friends I've had who've been, like, who were, like, studying abroad. Yeah, yeah, I, there might be a way, uh, but whenever I already own the game myself, I can't just, like, lob it and I've tried, and so, you know, they're all keys I've gotten for free anyway from being on various mailing lists, and they're pretty damn old. I've meant to hold, like, giveaways earlier this year. I've just been so busy. Okay, so Executive Suite. Now, I can handle some of the nomenclature and naming and what have you, but whenever it comes to the actual decisions, uh, you folks are going to be the ones who are taking charge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna always select the highest grade job for Executive Suite, uh, but we'll see where it goes for the actual decisions. Welcome to Mighty Microcomputer Corporation, everyone. And by the way, you folks have a bigger view of this game window than I do. <laughs> Trust me. That's okay. As a matter of fact, it might actually be bigger for me to play it in OBS than it is for me to actually play it in the game window. You know, I think I'm going to try that. I think I'm going to stare at OBS while I play this game. <laughs> As you enter the MMC building... I can't do that. Oh, uh, shit. That's great. The receptionist Angie smiles as if she knows you. Angie asks if you are new to MMC or are continuing a career. Well, we're new. Uh, and uh, we're going to do a prof initial professional totally hype interview. We're going to visit Simon Woodstock for that. It's good to see you made it. Try to relax. I'm going to ask you some questions and hopefully provide some answers on how you might fit into MMC. Our first name is going to be Chuckle, and our last name is going to be Fuck. And, uh, let me go ahead and get some dice out here. We are from the West. Very good. What is your hometown and state? Anyone got a clever or interesting hometown and state out there? Just curious. Monkey's Elbow? I like it. I like it. Monkey's Elbow. Monkey's Elbow Atlantis. It's in Kentucky. Okay, we'll just... We'll just murder Duncan Idaho. I like that too. Growing up in the West, where did you go to college? We went to a city college. And what was the name of your school? <laughs> Gothway Garden. Hey there, Von Grimm. What did you study at Gothway Garden? You know, that's a good damn question. What did we study? Give me my D10. Boys. We studied boys. And how did you do? <laughs> Great. Scored all the time. <laughs> did you go on to graduate school or had you enough education after Gothway Garden? Why, we jumped from school to work to make money. So how many years of prior work experience do we have? Hmm. How many years of... I got an idea. I'm not going to roll my D100 for this, but I will roll a D20. We'll get to the actual interactive stuff where you pick the choices after I get past this interviewing section. There's like a limit. There's like a 50 or 60 or however many years. I can't quite work. All right, that happened. <laughs> Sailing. <laughs> Uh, how old are we? Well, we want to start as early as we can so that we have the most chance to prosper and flourish, right? 18? What is your sex? Well, that's a good question. I shall roll to determine we're undecided. 
You'd better decide in a hurry or this interview is over. We all appreciate a sense of humor, but there are limits. Okay, we'll go ahead and create this first poll. Gender. <laughs> Male. Female. <laughs> I know, it's, it's rather tragic. My pronouns, damn it. Why won't you learn my pronouns? Uh, yeah, I, I said hi, Von Grimm Music. I said hi. I said hi. I promise. I did it. All right. Female it is. Okay. What is your current marital status? We're divorced. After all this talk, I'm feeling very comfortable about your application of MC. Just to see if I'm on track, how would you describe yourself? Well, how would we? Blind ambition, I just want to reach the top. There's no question, Chuckle, you make an impressive applicant. Let's see what entry-level positions MMC might have available for you. However, the economy is now depressed, so the best thing we can really do here is along uh, the job level twos. So, which job level two? Option one, option two, option three, option four. <laughs> so, this game is called Executive Suite. Uh, it's an old game made in 1982. Uh, it's a, an interactive, basically like a choose-your-own-adventure game. Uh, I like playing this with, uh, with my viewers on occasion. Uh, it's pretty fun and entertaining. Uh, sometimes I nominate people in the chat, and they make all decisions. And But most of the time, I just let them play it, and we see where we go. Yeah, it's entirely text-based. It's a choose-your-own-adventure game. Unsurprisingly, it's not one that's listed for me to pop up and display on Beam. Okay, we are an assembler. Congratulations, Chuckle. You got the job of assembler. So... We've gotten 10 years of work experience despite being 18 years old because, of course, we do. Uh, we were earning $18,000 per year. We got our own desk, a medical plan, and a whole week vacation. Now, this game is based in the United States where uh, universal health care ain't a thing, folks. So to have a medical plan ain't exactly a bad thing. <laughs> That's right. Worked at the family store for 10 years. I like that. You are assigned to an online production crew doing a very boring wiring job. I also need to turn off those little jingles because I'm paying attention to chat well enough. <laughs> All right, so in this position, do you concentrate on your work, getting another position, or the people around you? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Those jingles might even have been a little loud, too. Probably not that awful. Should make this as boring as possible, clearly. Alright, we'll focus on our work. That's fine. No worries. We'll be playing this for, uh... About... I don't know. Next, uh... Next almost two hours. Until five, my time. Hello, welcome everyone. Good performance leads you to a solid reputation and other opportunities. It also avoids on-the-job accidents, which can cause permanent disfigurement or social life setbacks. An entire itinerary is listed beneath this player, so you can see what's on the agenda for this marathon. You discover a cost-saving wiring technique in your assembly job. A quick estimate indicates possible savings of 10% per unit. Who do you want to tell? Frank Herman, the Vice President of Manufacturing, other workers, or no one, but use your new technique. <clears throat> I figured I'd start us off here this morning with uh, something, you know, interactive and fun. It really is an old favorite of the channel. Uh, even though, of course, uh, not as many people are going to be around at this time as there is later on. But that just means our interactivity is more special, right? All right, from 48% to 43%, we'll tell Frank Herman, the VP of Manufacturing. 
You've chosen the best course to change assembly policy. Your astuteness is noted by Frank, although he never actually admits an assembler improved productivity. An engineer, Brighton Star, asks you to assemble a toy rocket ship he has designed for his son. You are discovered working on the project by Frank Herman. So what do you want to do? You want to blame the engineer? You want to offer to make one for Frank Herman's son too? Or go into the toy business? Do I remember this game reliably? <sighs> reliably? Uh, I could direct us all the way to the top of the executive suite. I don't remember the, uh, the full outcome of every option choice, but I do know the game fairly well after playing it as much as we have. <laughs> and of course, all right, 79%, we're going to offer to make one of Frank Hummer's son too. Uh, of course, uh, there's uh, outlets in these option choices that will cause you to directly leave MMC or be fired. And the game does get harder as you progress further up the ladder. Don't take the issue too lightly, but indicate you did not think it a life and death matter when you started. Frank declines a rocket ship. Don't toy with me again, he adds as a parting blast. Chaco, you have been in the assembler position for one year and you did a good job. You had the discipline to finish work before playing, you befriended people, and your cost-effective solutions. Yeah, Von Grimm, I uh, do like playing them on occasion. I have uh, shared even local recordings of those on the channel. Uh, later on today, we're going to be revisiting Mecha Ace. It's another, it's a, you know, a, a prettier um, text-based game that's available on Steam. Uh, but it's the same sort of, like, theme. Uh, has a bit more story to it than uh, you just trying to advance up a corporate ladder. The economy is fair at the moment, folks. And we have a number of awesome jobs available to us at the level 3 position. So, what folks, what do you think you folks will want to do? Uh, customer service clerk, engineer in training, skilled assembler, personnel clerk, and accounts receivable clerk. Uh, now, as a note, uh, obviously, uh, many of my YouTube viewers will know this. Well, I guess pretty much all of them. Uh, they worry sometimes, but uh, for folks who are just new to watching this channel, uh, folks who come from Beam, I do upload just about everything, uh, not only local recordings, but archives, uh, onto uh, my YouTube channel as well. Obviously, Beam's VODs don't last forever, uh, so that is a means. And uh, option two, one by 45% of the vote. Uh, so like the old Mecha A stuff, and pretty much... Almost everything from the first marathon gets transferred there. So if for whatever reason you're curious, you're like, son of a bitch, I missed this. Or like, I don't want to go sifting through this massive 17 and a half hour marathon to find like one thing. It all gets shunted over to YouTube. Yeah, 14 days unpartnered, 90 days partnered. And I like having a blue name. Engineer in training, it is. We got the job. So, now making 23000 a year, we got our own desk, two-week vacation, still got the medical plan, and our first MMC keychain. Keychain hype. Woo! Keychain hype. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, it's it's a keychain. That's all. Just a keychain, I imagine, with like a little like plastic tab that has like MMC Mighty Microcomputer Corporation on it. I doubt it's that fancy. As a new engineer, you are subject to the whims of an organized project managers. At a last minute assignment, conflicts with a special seminar MMC has enrolled you in. Your project manager, Harriet Nance, tells you to handle the situation. What do you do? Delay the work, skip the seminar, or take the work to the seminar? We started at age 18, not 16. I tried putting in 16, but 18 is the minimum for this game. Okay, 74%. I'm not surprised. Take the work to the seminar. Tight, difficult scheduling, but you can get it all done. Harriet is impressed enough to give you a pair of running shoes and a year's supply of gum. Folks, we got a year's supply of gum. Yeah. Celebrate. You have the chance to carpool with three top engineers residing in your neighborhood. Everyone drives 
one week a month. You own a two-seat English sports car. You may choose to buy a new car, offer to pay for gas, decline carpool, or suggest a car convoy. I know. Woo! You know, I like to imagine that the flavor is whatever flavor you wanted. Harriet Nance was kind enough to give you that permission. What flavor of gum do you want? <clears throat> Can we pay them in gum? <laughs> uh, shit. <clears throat> Probably not. Okay, so we're going to offer to pay for gas. 63%. Oops. Oops. You actually select the fucking game window. A logical alternative to the expense of buying a new car. You do notice that gas tanks always seem low in the morning. Be sure to carry a number of gasoline credit cards. With time, you have become a valued engineer trainee. You are requested to select an engineering team to work with on the m and 3 project. Do you select the best engineers, the worst engineers, or do you want to work alone? So yes, for everyone unfamiliar with Executive Suite, this game does have a number of pitfalls in it. Uh, those get more severe uh, the further up you get the job on the job ladder. Uh, you could end up doing so poorly that you just can't go further up the job ladder, and it just peters out until you're forced into retirement. And there are some options that will lead directly to you being fired in this game. 51% says the best engineers. You learn invaluable secrets a lot about your trade from the engineering elite. You also live with the name Rookie for two years and fetch more than your share of donuts. And after one year, but you're going to be keeping the name Rookie for some time, you did a good job. You had an aggressive go-getter approach and you had team player instincts. And the economy is fair, allowing us to move into the job level fours. So, which among those job level fours folks would you like to be? You can be a salesman, a marketing assistant, a trainee financial assistant, or a senior accounting clerk. Also, folks, do keep in mind that when you get high enough up the job level, uh, something that they do look on in the, their review of your resume is to see how much job experience you have in the field. Like, uh, we've dabbled a bit over areas, and we'll probably end up continuing to dabble, because that is the nature of this whole voting scheme. It exists outside the level brackets, can't lava. All right, 33% say trainee financial assistant. Or analyst, excuse me. You got the job. So, 20 years old, been here for two years. You're making 30000 per year. You got your own desk. You got a two-week vacation. You got an access to a Watts line. I've had a number of folks ask about what that is, and you can go ahead and search engine that one. And a picture of Malcolm Farmsworth, most likely the third, who is the head of MMC. I know, no keychain, though. It's tragic. Pat Ivers, a college classmate, recommends buying out Mel Design Company based on private information. <laughs> I know, it's awful. Based on private information about a breakthrough in circuit development. Do you recommend to acquire Meld? Let the opportunity pass. Or explored further. Now, I know, Chad. Whenever we play Monster Loves You, it's always wanting to ask the questions, right? We need as much information as we can possibly get before making a reliable and reasonable decision. Yeah. You don't have to worry about adding me, Fluffy. I mean, you can if you want. I am very capable of paying attention to it reading chat, particularly with something interactive such as this. All right, 54% says explored further. Spoken like someone investing their own money, a good strategy, but eventually you must return to the option board and make another decision. This game has quite a bit of snarkiness, too, and uh, will absolutely punch you in the goddamn face. Like, oh, I'm going to be undecided gender. Unacceptable. I want to explore this further. Get fucked. So, uh, back to the option board. You want to acquire Meld or let the opportunity pass? No, Shad, you can't. Tragic, I know. I'm such a ruthless, ruthless god. Hey, Judio. Okay, 77% of you say to acquire Meld. And so we shall do so. 
Gambling on a dynamite on a dynamic company is in the spirit which founded MMC. You seem to be following in the founder's footsteps. Kerry Hoffman, the vice president of finance, recommends against the acquisition of Mel Design Company, despite expert analyst reports to the contrary. So do you approach and question him in private, explore it further, or have the research company send reports to the senior vice president of finance, Jason Parlay? Hello, Madricor. No, my milk is not iced, Clark. I uh, usually don't drink anything with ice in it. That's part due to like a dislike for ice, and also due to the fact that uh, sensitive, sensitive mouth. I've crunched down on ice before in the past. It's pretty rare for me, though. Uh, and whenever I go out to restaurants or I order something for fast food, I typically ask for no ice. In part to get more out of the same glass. And also because just drinks plenty cold for me. I don't need any colder. Close vote indeed. 38% have voted for option three. So we're going to tell Kerry Hoffman to get fucked and uh, send shit to the senior VP. You're called into a meeting with an irate Jason Farley and a smoldering Kerry Hoffman. You invoke a little-known MMC codicil. Financial analyst trainees are to be seen. Not heard. <laughs> Elaine Pincer, the editor of Circuit News Monthly, a key trade publication, asks for financial help. You have inside information that MMC is going to acquire the Mel Design Company. Do you tell Elaine? Do you make a stock purchase for him? Or look for other alternatives? <laughs> oh, well, you know, sometimes chat likes to miss it up. There's no telling uh, what those folks who uh, like to like the lurk out there really want to say. Also, let me go ahead and backspace that rogue state key I gave away out of the whole giveaway bucket so that I don't accidentally try and give that away again. All right, 55% say look for other alternatives. As it turns out, what Elaine really needs is a good account, not a good stock tip. You arrange his finances, and Elaine agrees to favorably interview Malcolm Farnsworth III, MMC's president. After one year, you did an average job. Uh, you acted in a progressive and decisive manner. You had an aggressive go-getter approach. But you got on the bad side of Jason Parlay, and that might come back to haunt you. Still, you had good interpersonal skills and good judgment. And the economy is expanding. However, the, we still only got job fours open to us. That average job really hurt. So, salesman or marketing assistant, folks? No, Rhinefinder, I don't know why your stream would keep minimizing. I to be uh, <laughs> I, I I don't I can't even fathom what that looks like. Uh, if you're having issues, um, and I've said this before on occasion, uh, you should contact like Beams Help. Like if you're having troubles with the player or having trouble viewing in an area, because it could be a problem like they're in Jeff servers. Or some such, and of course they're going through like beta overhaul. Just provide as much detail and explanation about the problem uh, to beam support. All right, 69% has voted for marketing assistant, and so shall it be. And we got the job. So three years. Uh, after three years, uh, we're now making thirty-one thousand dollars per year. We got an official MMC jacket, owned as two weeks vacation, and travel and entertainment allowance. Yeah. So Sam Danger, the vice president of marketing, asks you to see a client on your vacation to visit your in-laws. So, what's your response to Sam Danger, the VP of marketing? Sure. There's nothing to do in Iowa. Tell them, all right, yeah, but then I'm not doing it. Cancel the vacation or ask your company to subsidize those travel costs. Although they're already covering your allowance. I mean, they probably weren't going to cover it on your vacation. So maybe you can get it covered on the vacation too, right? I 
Maligon is noting that uh, deleting uh, cash helped because uh, uh, they experienced that problem on Twitch before. All right, 53% say, sure, there's nothing to do in Iowa. You are displaying the same loyalty to MC you show your Iowa in-laws. One will reward you with apple pie, the other with a slice of the pie. You hurry from the building to your car in order to get a special delivery package to the post office. In the company parking lot, a well-dressed man asks you to help him start his Mercedes. Do you decline to help so that you can get that damn package at the post office, or end up helping? This well-dressed man of mystery and romance and adventure. <laughs> also, I'm sitting in a super creaky yet comfortable chair. I'm not doing much in the way of intensive gameplay right now. I'll be switching uh, to my hardback chair. Uh, later on in this broadcast. Uh, all vote poll options appear at the top above the chat. Uh, clicking on like a little vote now link should uh, make those options uh, pop up for folks. I do also know that, um, and uh, option two, one with 81%, that uh, one of the overhauls that Beam is doing is the poll thing, because I certainly think it could look better. Uh, I think the one on Hitbox definitely looks better than this one. Uh, so there, there is uh, that something too. A thing. Voting was rigged. Folks didn't have the poll this time. Mmm. Fascinating. Had the sound. Interesting. We'll see. Uh, that's the first time that it ever ended up happening. Beam just melted. All right, chat. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to do it again. Do it again. Just got to see a poll this time. All right. Turns out that option two is still winning by a landslide. <laughs> All right, all right. You can put down the pitchforks and the torches. There's no need to burn the thatched roofs. We did it, everyone. We're gonna go vote now, okay? No, we're gonna go help now. The gentleman turns out to be Dudley Farnsworth, the leader of a stockholder's revolt against the MMC's shakily entrenched board and president. As a way of thanking you, and perhaps getting information, Dudley invites you to a party. Do you wish to accept this invitation or decline the invitation? <laughs> I'll know a trip ticket, don't you fucking start. <laughs> you folks want to get your party on? Listen to some Andrew WK. When it's time to party, we will party hard. <laughs> I don't have the hair for that anymore. Shaved my head last month. This is all grown in the span of a month. All right, 68% say party time. At the party, you are bombarded with questions about MMC's management and job offers to work with the adversary group. Do you want to give information, but don't join? Do you want to give information and agree to join, or decline information and the invitation? <laughs> That's right, Lord Fail. I fail to see how uh, any any complications or problems can arise. We will we will fight the MMC from within. I just came here for the booze, man. <laughs> All right, sixty-two percent of you said decline the information and the invitation. You just thought it was gonna be a fun party. Boys, not booze. Mm. You are perceived as the enemy and are lucky to get a second drink. The Vice President of Sales, Red Turner, invites you to spend an afternoon drinking with clients the same day your monthly report is due. Do you accept, decline, or try to meet up with them later? I mean, you can combine your two joys, booze and boys. Boys and booze, yeah, why not? 
in honor of Carrie Fisher. Rebel! Invokes it as a uh, pleasure to uh, be with you all today as we uh, embark upon our second uh, Grimness Grimpocalypse Marathon in this, uh, this week between Christmas Day and uh, the New Year. It's been a pretty rough year for me. I'm uh, excited to uh, get along and have some fun and play some little old text-based games. Let's go ahead and try and meet up with them later, then, according to 54% of you. You show up at the prearranged restaurant, but Red has decided to dine elsewhere. You have shown friendliness and good intentions, but $15 is a lot for two beers and a bowl of pretzels. After one year, you did a good job, Chuckle. You had an aggressive go-getter approach. You remained loyal to management, and you had the discipline to finish work before playing. Economy is fair, and we got some job fives open to us, everyone. Woo! We did it. We got job fives. And there is quite a few job fives open to us, everyone. We got an assistant product manager. We've got engineer. We've got production foreman. We've got compensation supervisor. And we got accounting supervisor. After that, uh, after that lateral move, we can now keep. We are going up a new ladder now, right? No, oh, make our own keychains. Tempting, huh? Huh? <laughs> I guess there's only one way to find out, Trip Ticket. All right, fifty-six percent say engineer. Applying for a new MC position is fun, but you never know what will be recalled from your from your past. You're remembered for your team player instincts and your aggressive go-getter approach. Um, what is it, 12, 13, 14? Somewhere in the mid-teens. Blade killer. We got the job of engineer. We now get a cubicle, a working telephone, and matching Furniture with $39,000 per year. Conrad Edison asks you to do a prestigious project working on the new or the Eminem 4 microcomputer design review. Your joy turns to gloom when you find a design flaw in a product component. You want to disclose the flaw, hide the flaw, or fix the flaw and not tell anyone. That's right. Matching furniture, damn it. That's super important to have in your cubicle, okay? It's a big deal. <sighs> yes, a working telephone. That applies that up to this point, we haven't had a working telephone. <laughs> oh. Disclosing the flaws of winning out here amongst the uh, voters. 59% has elected to disclose the flaw. Controversy rages as half the staff denies there is a flaw. Ultimately, you are vindicated, but the project is bogged down for months. You become addicted to Pepto-Bismol and must eat curried food once a week to balance the effect. Senior management has dragged its heels on salary increases, while total MMC profits have skyrocketed. Now, a company-wide movement is fomented by Brighton Star and other engineers to get royalties on inventions. You must choose to either join the job action, oppose the job action, or tell Brighton you back the job action while telling Con Edison you support management. How duplicitous do you folks want to be? Not very by the looks of things. Uh, number two is winning out here in the polls, uh, but you know, not a huge margin. Number one in particular is staying very competitive. <laughs> I know, I know. Sometimes they really care about the drama, drama and will thrust themselves into basically, you know, everyone getting fucked. And then sometimes we end up in this moment. Well, as it turns out, the poll ended up tying at 39% each for options number one and options number two. And so uh, the poll option has selected for us option number one. I have been told... And I've seen no evidence to refute this, that in the case of a beam tie on poles, uh, an RNG will select uh, one or the other of the ties. And uh, from what I've seen, that's the case. That's definitely true. 
but just to know what's happening back there in the background. So instead of me having to roll, it just ends up deciding. Or maybe the information I've received and my what I perceived on the polls thus far is entirely fake. Runoff vote? Nope. Or you're going to join the job action. You maintain solidarity with your fellow engineers. You share sidewalk time and your last stick of gum with them as well. Oh no, the gum has ran out. Returning to work at the end of the job action, you discover your personal belongings have all been looted except for a tie from your brother-in-law. <laughs> Politics begin to appear in the engineering department. Top engineers are vying for management positions. You are pressed to become involved. I know the matching furniture is gone, the keychain's gone, the jacket's gone. We focus on work. Avoid the situation and study for advanced engineering certificate, or get involved in the politics. <clears throat> Chats in an uproar. That's it. We're going to get a damn certificate now. This is bullshit. 65% says we're getting certified. You add to your personal credentials while maintaining neutrality. Conversations are diverted towards esoteric discussions of technology. All on the part of your fellow engineers quickly turns to boredom. Your strategy works. After one year, you did an average job. You acted in a progressive and decisive manner. You stood up for product quality. But you acted counter to management's union policy. Still, you did stay out of office politics. However, the economy is depressed. And so... We're still at job level 5, folks. With that in mind, where would you like to go from here? Assistant product manager, production foreman, compensation supervisor, or accounting supervisor? I know not the jacket! Down with the unions! Arr. Compensation does sound fun. My bad. All right, forty-eight percent have voted to be production foreman. Well, that's what we'll do to be. Unfortunately, you are remembered for acting counter to management union policy. Still, you had some good things, and you're now production foreman. Making $40,000 per year, got the cubicle, got the working telephone, and got matching furniture. You must choose a shop floor management style in your new position as production foreman. So, how would you like to manage it here? Would you like to be tough? Would you like to be Theory Z, Japanese management style, firm but fair, or removed? Managed by the numbers. Theory Z. You know, Boo Bear, I couldn't rightfully tell you. That'd be something you, uh, you'd have to search engine. It's a Japanese management style. That's all. No one needs to... Uh, no. If anyone did know off the top of their heads without posting Google Pasta, that, would, that wouldn't be bad. Alright, 52% has said firm but fair, so we're doing it. You are liked for your consistency. Uh, respected for your performance, appreciated for your results, and morale is high. Smooth water makes for the best sailing. We can have our Solari man. <sighs> All right, JW there has uh, posted some text about it. You get an employee grievance from Pamela, an attractive assembler who files a sexual harassment complaint. So what do you do? You take Pamela out to dinner <laughs> and discuss the problem. Do you hold a grievance meeting or defer to the personnel department? Hmm. <laughs> Option number one's in pretty strong contention here. That's fairly divided across the board. All the votes are coming in. Option two is edged out here. <laughs> All right, option two wins out there. That's a tie, 37% apiece. Uh, option one was winning there, now only with 26% of the vote. 
You shall hold a grievance meeting. Direct action straight to the heart of the matter. Pamela is satisfied, the guilty parties are chastised, and you squashed a potential lawsuit. Have a cigar. Pamela, a usually reliable employee, is injured while horsing around on the production line. <laughs> she is due for a promotion this year if she acquires enough duty days. Do you recommend that she not be promoted, keep the circumstances secret, and promote her, or punish the entire shift? Maybe, maybe it's a different Pamela, right? Maybe it's a different Pamela. Uh, hey, Manakai, uh, voting uh, will uh, appear uh, in a chat option above, like, the uh, the chat window. It'll be, like, a drop-down box that says, hey, blah, 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 blah. There's a vote thing. You click vote now, and there's one of the two options. Uh, I'm having, like, 30-second polls. Uh, those will get selected, and uh, then, like, yeah, there you go. So 64% uh, have decided that uh, to recommend that she not be promoted here. How you doing today, Madagai? Pamela tries to return quickly but cannot. She threatens to sue for discriminatory practice. You suggest this is a tired tune and that Pamela find another place to sing. That's right, do keep in mind that the character has is female, as selected by the viewers. Chuckle, after one year you did an average job. You supported and had faith in your people. You had a positive management style. You had an open manner of addressing problems. You also had a bureaucratic approach to problem solving. <laughs> oh no, Manakai, don't do that. No, no, don't you weasel out of this. You need to ease your feet into broadcasting King of Dragon Pass. Not everyone is going to want to watch me play whatever I'm going to be playing. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I will turn this goddamn broadcast around. <laughs> the economy is depressed. So we're still looking here at lateral moves, everyone. Got assistant product manager, they've got compensation supervisor, and you've got accounting supervisor. That's right, some folks would prefer watching King of Dragon Pass, especially for someone who's broadcasting for their first time. You know, they want to interact in the story, and some people enjoy you from the role-playing stuff that we've done together over all the time. Don't tease the people, Manakai. I know, Trip Ticket, it's awful. Alright, looks like we're going to be compensation supervisor, so off we go. And we're remembered for a lot of good things. That's right, there's multi-stream as well. That's right, damn it, Manakai. I have turned this damn car around. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, folks can do multi-stream. They can watch multiple streams, man. All right, we got the job of compensation supervisor. We got personalized stationery now. The working telephone might have been taken away, though. <laughs> Frank Herman, the Vice President of Manufacturing, asks you to give a higher than normal salary to a special recruit, Brighton Star. You grant that salary or stick to established compensation tables. The phone was converted to the stationary. Damn, I wonder what kind of special process that, that involves. Uh, it's going to be a pretty long marathon today, folks. Executive Suite is the first of several games. If you have any questions about what the itinerary looks like, you can just look below this broadcast window. It's right, Manica. The moment you take that first step, you'll never look back. You want to keep doing more of it. Oh, man. You know, I am wondering about whether there actually is an RNG back there behind the scenes. Because every time I've seen, every single time I've seen a tie, and it's been like six ties now, it's all been like the earliest option in the totem pole. Now, it's not mathematically impossible for sure. A coin could certainly flip heads 13 times in a row. I'm merely noting that I'm a little suspicious of the information I've been told now. And I might just start rolling in the case of ties from here on I think I will. I think I will from here on. This will be the last one where I'll just accept the tie. We're going to grant the higher salary. 
You get a good reputation with line people. You have the judgment to be flexible in company policy, what is in the MMC's best interest. You hope Frank returns the favor when you want to transfer into manufacturing. MMC is under heavy pressure from women employees about compensation structures. Joyce Stern, the Vice President of Administration, asks you to manipulate the figures to indicate that women receive equal pay. Your research indicates differently. Do you manipulate the numbers, report the situation accurately, or ask Jason Parley to intercede? Jason Parley is further up the totem pole, and you folks will recall that uh, we didn't make an ally of him. So yes, I was uh, I was operating under the uh, the tie. Ended up like randomly selected based on you know what I thought was accurate information. However, it's possible that uh, whoever I got that information one one was just misinformed, or maybe the coin just keeps flipping in one direction all the time. But we'll roll from this point in the future. Fifty three percent say option two, and so we will do that. Joy Stern is furious with you. The MMC's Women Coalition promises you a high position under MMC's first woman president. You promise to hold your breath until 2083. Helena Gray, a close friend, files for a workers' compensation extension when you know she is fully recovered. The application comes to you for approval. Do you approve it? Reject it? Try to talk some sense into her or sign someone else's name to the claim. Oh, Chad, come on. Come on, you don't want to do option number four? I voted for option number four. Come on. <laughs> come on. Why you gotta be like this, Chad? Oh, man. Bunch of sticks in the mud. Come on, Chad. All right. Fine. Fine, 54%. Fine, number three. Fine. Host. <laughs> so be it. Let's try and talk some sense in her. It's a long, tough conversation, killing two bottles of wine and a few million brain cells. When Helena finally sobers up, she's forgotten all about her scam. That's right, I am also voting. Chuckle, after one year, you did a good job. You had good judgment. You befriended Doug MacArthur and Frank Herman. You put off the powerful Joyce Stern. You got good interpersonal skills, and you got a positive management style, and the economy is expanding. Bitches, they're all sixes. So, out of all these sixes we got, which six would you like? We got a district sales manager, we got a market research supervisor, we got an engineering project manager, we got an assistant plant manager, we got a financial analyst, and we got an assistant to the executive vice president. That's right, they're all sixes, folks. Votes are fairly divided, as is to be expected whenever there's six damn options on the board. Uh, but uh, there are two very powerful options, and uh, option number three has 49% of the vote. Option number six was second, with 28% of the vote. All right, engineering project manager it is. Uh, you're remembered for some good things, and not so many bad things. You got the job. $52,000 per year. You got a cubicle. You got allowance. You got a life insurance policy. You got matching furniture. And an electrical pencil sharpener. Yeah, buddy. Electric pencil sharpener. Let's go. You must decide on the m, &M 4 memory component design approach. Pressure is applied by marketing, sales, and finance with all the obvious intentions. Which approach do you advocate? Go with a workable design, go with an advanced design, or form a committee to make a decision. Take care, Cyrix. That's right. They're <laughs> electric pencils, yes. <laughs> it's the pencils that are electric rather than the sharpener. Will it be, will, will it be committee decision, just like our chuckle fuck democracy? 50% of the vote says option one. We're going to go with a workable design. 
This practical strategy guarantees a return on investment, but does not gather state-of-the-art technology reviews. You note that the m M4 is selling out, which is more than most Broadway shows can say. Pursuing an idea on your own initiative, you develop a revolutionary memory chip concept. Unfortunately, Doug MacArthur, Senior Vice President of Operations, is not interested in revolutions. How do you respond? Do you accept the decision? Do you quit and start your... Paul, why didn't you start? Let's try that again. <laughs> oh no. It actually did start? But it actually didn't pop up for me this time. Ah, how about that? That's the second time the poll has glitched out today. But, uh... <laughs> didn't glitch out at all Monday. Uh, so, I can't cancel the poll. I have to wait for the poll to end. 17 folks, though, did see it, though. So, that's cool. Let's try that again. All right. So option one, accept the decision. Option two, quit and start your own company. Or option three, bootleg the project. All right. Looks like quite a few votes on this one. Option one, however, does appear to be the winner here. And with 50% of the vote, we are selecting option one. You're not happy, but it isn't worth ending your future at MMC. Your initiative is recognized, if not rewarded. You are managing... <laughs> you are managing a key m and for project segment. Jenny, one of your younger but critical engineers, is having marital problems. So what do you decide to do? Gonna give her time off for personal affairs? Do you give her lots of work or do you call and complain to her husband? Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Finally, an influx of votes for option one has beaten down option three. It's close. It's definitely close. 47% have voted for option one. You judge the critical factors and back off. This is a dynasty. You don't need a soap opera at work. And after two years, you did a good job, folks. You had a pragmatic decision making. You, you didn't, but you didn't stand your ground under pressure, but that's okay. It's fine. You had good interpersonal skills and you supported and had faith in your people. The economy is expanding. So all of the options, folks, are job level sevens. It's big time here, folks. The big time. Regional sales manager, marketing product manager, market research manager, production control manager, assistant personnel manager, and assistant to the treasurer. Now, if any of these jobs get rejected, like if the number one choice from the poll gets rejected, I'll just go down the list of, like, voting. And that's one of the reasons why I dislike the beam poll as it currently exists, because it fades away after a short period of time after the poll is concluded. So you can't stare at really all the option choices. It's something I do dislike. 52% have uh, said uh, option four. 18% is the six is the next highest with 18%. So we'll do that. Number four and then number six. And then number three if that fails. All right. Remember for good shit though, for number four, and you got the job of production control manager. $70,000 per year now, bitches. Only 27 years old, and that's in early 1980s money. Been working for nine years. Well, you got. 10 years of job experience on top of that. You got a private office. You got travel and entertainment allowance. You got a life insurance policy. You got a Chevy company car. You got access to the Watts line. And you got garage parking. You must lead OSHA inspectors on a plant tour to investigate an unsafe condition charge made by an anonymous caller. So, what's your attitude? You want to be Mr. Nice Guy? You want to ask for a court order? Do you want to give a cryptic tour or try to intimidate them? 
Uh, there are a number of car types listed in this game. We saw a Mercedes earlier, of course. <sighs> Chant, you're being so friendly and benevolent today. How could you? Sixty-six <laughs> percent uh, says, "Be Mister Nice Guy." They wonder what you're hiding, but are polite during inspection. And they come buzzing around the plant like bees to honey for a few weeks. They can discover no problems and are very disappointed. You must adjust production schedules to allow for the introduction of the m, &M 4 systems. With that in mind, what would you folks like to do? Do you want to construct a new facility, perhaps? The poll did not appear for me. Appreciate that, Paul. That's the third time we've had a profitable debate. Maybe it's because I'm doing the polls too quickly, you know. Mm. Beam, I am very disappointed in you right now. <laughs> Sad. Apologize. That being said, it worked for 61 people. It just didn't vote for me. <laughs> How about that? Yes, this is called Executive Sweep. So we'll accept it. Even though I didn't get to vote. Rude. Disgraceful. 59% of the vote says option two. So that's what we'll go with. Use linear programming for efficiency and timeliness. Efficiency improvement may be offset by inflexibility and intolerance of variation. You contemplate robot technology. They don't have a union, they don't eat much, and they talk directly to your computer. You must make recommendations on the distribution. Well, there of course is chatter in, uh, in the massive December update that the RTMP, which was between 2 and 5 seconds behind, is accelerating up to 15 seconds behind. But I'm not running faster than light because uh, it hasn't been... Uh, like, uh, eventually, transcoding options will be available in faster than light whenever the update is released for everyone in 2017. Uh, but as for now, uh, transcoding options are only available in faster than light uh, if you're being pro and you, like, opted into the beta. Uh, and I'm not being pro. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm not running FTL for that purposes to allow folks uh, who are running on potato internet to have, you know, some transcoding options. No, there's not a poll. I didn't run a poll. I was busy talking about something instead of running a poll. FTL also doesn't work with live streamer. Well, <laughs> that's not a problem I really have to worry about. <laughs> For fuck's sake, chat. <laughs> oh boy. Oh goodness. All right, 64% have uh, said to be fair. So I guess that's what we'll do. I guess we'll be fair. New equipment is split according to need and responsibility for the greatest productivity. Both plants reach peak efficiency quickly. Your savvy is indicated in your annual bonus. After two years, you did a good job, folks. You had a positive management style. You had an open manner of addressing problems, a bureaucratic approach to problem solving, your team management, team player instincts, and your sense of fair play. The economy, however, is depressed, but there is a job eight open, and there's only one job eight open, so we're going to go ahead and try to select it. You're remembered for a lot of good things, but you did act counter to management unit union's policy once upon a time. Still, you got the job. Plant manager. After 11 years, 
plant manager, making $82,000 per year. You win company car now. It's in the mid-teens somewhere. Anticipated marketing market demand for the M&M4 role model. M&M4 role model? <laughs> for the M&M4 model is very high. You must develop plans for plant expansion to handle the demand. So, where do you decide to go from here? We can do it very cheap. We can do it functional. We can to go for a gold-plated plant or delegate this hot potato task. Oh. Well, not a whole lot of folks wanted to see that gold-plated plant, folks. Always delegate, I know. It's not my problem. It's not my problem. I delegate to you folks in chat. Not my problem. <laughs> All right, 70% with 70 votes. Elect for number two. The facilities are satisfactory to workers. The finance department and productivity quotas. A smooth transition to the marketplace creates a successful launch and support. You treat yourself to a bottle of Dom Perignon in a private launch ceremony. Manolo and Harvey, two workers specially trained in fragile packing and shipping, turn out to be illegal aliens. Immigration officers are at the plant looking for them. With that in mind, folks, as I go ahead and create this poll here, how do you want to work with this? You want to offer them a bribe? Let the workers be arrested or call the company lawyer. Chat's like, fuck this. Got to call the company lawyer. This is totally, totally, totally out of sight of my pay grade. And tell them, halt. Halt. <laughs> Object you. <laughs> oh, shit. 72% with 72 votes say to call the company lawyer. Well, he advised you to cooperate. You lost two workers, time, and a legal department's fee. And this lawyer is on your side. An entire shift. And I go ahead and get a glass of milk first for a drink. It's good. It's good, Savage. It's good. Come on, throw. You need to hold it together for like another fucking 15, 16 hours. This game is called Executive Suite. It is an old uh, interactive story, a choose-your-own-adventure game, uh, created in 1982. An entire shift walks out in sympathy with two deported workers during a crucial period out of the m and 4 production line. With that in mind, chat, what would you like to do? Bust the strike? Meet with the workers? Bend to workers' demands? Or say, fuck it, I'm sending it out, man. <laughs> uh, number three not even getting any votes at all <laughs> I know Marvin sometimes Chad is volatile and mercurial and sometimes they really want to work together 77% of the vote says meet with the workers you work out a compromise based on good treatment of other workers. Their loyalty to the MMC is still strong. Good job. After three years, you did a good job. You had pragmatic decisions. You had cost-effective solutions. You consistently followed MMC policies. You had good interpersonal skills. And you supported and had faith in your people. The economy is fair. And we can now become the vice president of manufacturing. Remember for a lot of good things. And you're now the VP of Manufacturing, folks. 32 years old. After 14 years, you're looking at $105,000 per year. Private office, 1,000 stock options, a $10,000 expense budget, life insurance policy, Buick company car, and the matching furniture is back. Brrr. 
Administration notes that personnel turnover in MMC's home plant is nearly 60% annually. And productivity seems to be high. Well, after like 14 years, we're in the 90s now, right? Your response is, let a productive situation persist. Let me go ahead and grade the poll. Discipline the plant manager, Barney Stone. Or institute an employee communications plan through Benton Bowles, the vice president of PR. Administration notes the personnel turnover in MMC's home plant is nearly 60% annually. Looks like many of you are looking to embrace that communications plan. Neat. Very much so. <laughs> All right, 61% of the vote has opted to institute an employee communications plan. And so it shall be. The opportunity to air complaints and opinions can take the steam out of this teapot. At worst, Benton Bowles will bore the employees into passivity. And, you know, it makes people feel better when they can just vent out their frustrations, even if nothing can or will really be done about them. It's like, we apologize for the airplane delay, right? Brr, I'm pissed, I'm angry. Brr, well, I mean, what the fuck are you going to do about it? Brr. Brr. <laughs> Quality control problems surface in the home plant while training new employees to take over for strikers. B.T. Barnum, Senior Vice President of Marketing, files an official complaint with the Executive Committee. With that in mind, what do you want to do? Ask for a full report, shut down the production line, proceed and investigate, or fire Hewitt, the Quality Control Manager. B.T. Barnum. Brr. I'm not gonna vote for this one, I don't think. I'll just see where it goes. Chat's very divided between uh, number one and number three. Oof. 39% of the vote says proceed and investigate. So be it. You keep things going during the investigative process, it turns out that the small procedural difference solves 90% of the problem at no cost. For your next act, you turn water into wine. You become the Messiah. Holy shit. Damn. <laughs> Progressed in power pretty quickly, huh? <laughs> 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 Good times, good times. You are a corporate Griffith, that's right. How does that feel? You are caught up in a major political battle as different plants compete for production orders on the M&M 4 line. With that in mind, where would you like to build this new M&M? You want to do it at the home plant? You want to do it at the international plant? Or you want to do it at the new Sunbelt plant? Sun belt. It's a belt with a sun. Aww. Solar powered belt. Full of gumdrops and lollipops. It's new. New, 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 new sun belt. <laughs> Good times. Okay. Looks like we're doing a number one home plant with 47% of the vote. Oh, no, Blade Killer. <laughs> like, take it back. Greatest control, capacity, and production capability as long as earlier problems with quality control and employee turnover are satisfactorily resolved. After three years, you did a good job, folks. Optimistic outlook, pragmatic decision-making, cost-effective solutions, and good judgment. Because all those problems were solved the home plant before we decided to build up the home plant. Worked out just fine. Good work, everyone. The economy is fair. And now we have the opportunity to become the senior vice president of operations. And you're remembered for nothing but good things. Good job, everyone. So, $169,000 per year. After 17 years of working at MMC, you got a private corner office. 
10000 in stock options, a $20,000 expense budget, an executive washroom key, Mercedes company car, and an executive exercise program. That's right. With the $20,000 expense budget, you can buy the keychains. Bam! Keychains! Just someone opens up your fucking private corner office. Keychains! Uh, the M&M 4 hits the market. Oh, by the way, before I create the poll, folks, we're at level 10 now. Shit has gotten increasingly harder, and now here we are in the the thick of it. The double-digit job level, like, holy fucking shit, if you make a mistake, you might be able to, like, recover and ascend. Or you might just go tumbling down job levels as you get older and older, and you're never able to get another chance. So, uh, before I create this poll, step carefully. The MM4 hits the market, and suddenly, you need more production capacity to respond to a sales spurt. What would you like to do? Build a new domestic plant? Add a third shift? Expand the main plant? Or add a new foreign plant or subcontract? Some big division here across the board. The strongest options are number three and number two here in the poll. Perhaps I should make these longer polls, uh, since we're in the big double digits now, from 30 seconds to like 60, to give folks like an opportunity to like argue their points. Anyway, option number three has won, 33% of the vote. Option number two was close by with 27%. We shall expand the main plant. MMC's commitment to expansion proves costly when demand slacks off. You subdivide and sell the new production buildings as multifamily lodging for workers. Barney Stone, the newly arrived national production manager, is held hostage in a Middle Eastern country. So... Since Barney Stone is being held hostage, folks, would you like to launch a raid to recapture Barney? Would you like to call the State Department, call Barney's family, or run an ad to hire a replacement? <laughs> Damn, I forgot to make this a longer poll. Well... Dying fucking touching the vote anyway. I'm keeping my hands up to myself here. Forty-four percent says to call the State Department. Thirty-four percent said to run ahead to hire a new replacement. Twenty-one said to launch a raid to recapture Barney. That's right. Who will do that job? Who's on first, and where is it? State's immediate reaction is to investigate the kidnappers' rights under international law. God damn it! An economic downturn means that sales orders are down and production costs must be trimmed. With that in mind, everyone, since you are almost the leader and ruler of everything forever, do you want to cut production staff by 20%? Do you want to hold staff and absorb losses? Do you want to go to reduced work week? Or do you want to build up your inventory? Inventory is full. Once again, I forgot to create longer, a poll timer. That's something else about Beam, is that it just by default, like, lasts 30 seconds, instead of just the poll ending whenever I click an end poll button, which I don't like. Say, compare that to Hitbox, where I was able to just, like, run a poll for however long and then end it myself. 48% of you, however, have said option four, to build the inventory. Inventory's full. Confidence in an economic turnaround must be realized, or even greater cuts will be needed later on. Your optimism is to be admired, but not realized. You ask Mr. Volker and Representative Kemp to speak at your plant, but are refused 
because the tight economy has eliminated their travel budgets. You did an average job after three years. You had costly solutions to problems, you had a bureaucratic approach to problem solving, and you had extravagant taste when NMC is paying the bill. The economy is fair, and we're staring at nines, folks. So, looking at all these damn nines. Where would you like to try and go? Right, Boo Bear? Jesus, I forgot again. Damn it. <laughs> I just, I have to keep punching in the longer pull time every single pull I create, because by default it's 30 seconds. Okay. Honest engines will do 60 seconds. I swear. I'll fucking, I'll, I'll remember. I'll probably remember. This isn't not bad, though. 74% of you said uh, number three. So it's three, six, four, five, two. Do we go back down? We can see Pamela again. All right. We'll have to go through the other things because we're remembered for good shit. We can now be the vice president of engineering. Hooray! It's, uh... To job level nine, though, we've gone down the ladder here. As the new vice president of engineering, you must decide how to allocate R&D funding. Okay, okay, great, Al. <laughs> this decision has obvious career impact, as well as determining MMC's future position in the market. So, looking at these budgets, what would you like to do? You want to invest in short-term projects? You want to invest in long-term projects? Or you want to cut the budget? Cut the budgets, rather. Yes, the key to the golden throne has been lost. <laughs> Being behind is so fun. Can't be that far behind. We don't do well this round. I'm going for the fun answers. <laughs> Most of the chat wasn't alive in 80s. That's the problem. Yeah, that's what it is. All right, 63% of you have elected for option two to invest in long-term projects. We're definitely, we're definitely in the 90s, if not in the 2000s. Down the road, these long-term projects pull MMC to the forefront of the industry. You face a battle with less far-sighted departments. Send the rose-colored glasses given you as a gift back to finance with a prescription suggestion. Short-term have R&D make cocaine. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, have I dropped any frames? I've dropped a whopping 21 frames. Okay. Everyone has their eyes on you and the new Mad Computer Project. Unfortunately, cost overruns in the project, unforcing some tough decisions. So, what do you decide to do? Limit the computer's functional capabilities. Use less reliable components in its production. Cut back on product aesthetics and packaging. Or go to the executive committee and ask for more development funds. Everyone has their eyes on you and the new mad computer project. Unfortunately, cost overruns in the project are forcing some tough decisions. With these tough decisions in mind, what will chat select? With its 60 seconds to contemplate. That's right, it's still 80s logic, damn it. 
It's still real to me. <laughs> what time is it? Oh my goodness. Looks like we're only going to get one run done of this. I'm not surprised. The executive suite can take a while. Especially whenever you're doing fairly well. We didn't have a, uh, a short run. So uh, this will be the only run of executive suite we have for this time block. Okay, 64% of you voted for number three, cutting back on product aesthetics and packaging. So you decide to produce an ugly duckling. Good to see you stand up for engineering integrity. Besides, is Sophia Loren... I wonder how many of you get that fucking reference. <laughs> Could overcome her nose. The mad computer can be beautiful, even in a plain casing. All right. All right. New poll time. Do you get the reference? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about what I expected. <laughs> I'm glad we can have this interactive gameplay together, everyone. Oh, boy. Sorry, only old in spirit. Get them kids fucking whatever. Whatever, whatever. Half of us probably just Googled it. That is the option you do have at your fingertips these days. I see, back in my day. <laughs> oh, man. It's not a surprise. Sophia Lauren hasn't been relevant in fucking... <laughs> for quite some time. Seventy-eight votes. Seventy-three percent of you said no. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Doug MacArthur, the senior vice president of operations, announces your project has just won an international science and technology award. Haven't made a poll yet. The creative concept and major ideas are the work of a single engineer. Brighton Star, that fucking name, that son of a bitch, all over again. That Brighton Star, how, how, how dare he come up again? So, with that in mind, what do you want to do with it, Brighton? You want to suggest Brighton accept the award? Do you suggest that you both accept the award? Do you ignore Brighton's contribution, or do you buy him off? Also, keep in mind that uh, this character, Chucklefuck, is a lovely lady. Who had 10 years of work experience before she started working at MMC at the ripe old age of 18. She's uh, been working at MMC for quite some time. Uh, but things things have gotten a little dimmer for her as of late. Hopefully this job can turn it all around. Because uh, once you start getting old and long in the tooth in this game, opportunities really dwindle for you. As uh, MMC pushes you out. Oh yes, we're divorced as well. Man, Chocolate Fox had a rough life. All those boys she chased. You know? <laughs> I don't think you can call those folks, Boo Bear. But hell, maybe I'm wrong. Alright, 51%, 71 votes for going with option two. We both accept the award. You recognize your subordinate, placate management, and get a reputation as a Solomon figure. Well, maybe we need another... Maybe we need another poll for that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Let's just make all these sort of like random junk polls. <laughs> Do you get the Solomon reference? <laughs> yes. No. All right. Chat knows more about Solomon than they do about Sophia Lauren. That's not a surprise. <laughs> Splitting babies in half seems to be a more popular activity. That's fair. That's fair. I think that's fair. Don't you think that's fair? I think it's fair. 
Maybe I'm, I'm the one who's wrong here, though. <laughs> That's the only possible conclusion, Trip Ticket. I, I can't see any other possible solution. Do you remember? I remember. Oh, jeez. Good times. Good times. <laughs> oh, sorry. Old bones creaking. And my chair. Getting sitting in a nice comfy chair before I get into the hard metal one for serious gameplay later. All right. You got the Solomon reference. I'm, I'm proud of some of you. Now, let me check something here quick. All right. We're back. Chuckle, you have been in the vice president engineering position for three years, and you did a good job. Had strong leadership qualities. You promoted R&D, the lifeblood of MC. Had good interpersonal skills, and you supported and had faith in your people, and the economy is expanding. But you're still in the job level nines. You're still there, trying to get back into the double-digit job levels. Still knocking on that door. So, with that in mind, where do you folks want to go next? We got Vice President of Sales, Vice President of Marketing, Vice President of Administration, Vice President of Finance, and Vice President of Public Relations. Well, Finsternis, that's not how MMC works. It's a volatile environment. MMC is constantly bringing in new blood. And uh, if you're not capable of advancement, then you need to go the fuck home. It's the way it works. It's a volatile machine. A corporate, you know, behemoth that chews up its employees and only the hardiest, the most cutthroat, rise to the top. That's right. Promote until incompetency. That's how you do it. Although in this case, you promote until in incompetency, but rather than staying at that job, you then get demoted back into competency. And then just keep getting demoted. <laughs> okay, looks like we're going to try number three, then number five. And then two, four, one. So first, Vice President of Administration. You are not remembered for a lot of good things here, buddy. Yep. This one's kind of rough. <laughs> no. So we're going to try public relations now, which of course has elevated itself to number four. Thankfully, you're remembered for a lot of good things here. Turns out that uh, upsetting Jason Parley and Joyce Stern has finally come back to upset uh, the Chuckle Fox. So we're now in PR. Congratulations! Making $115,000 per year, 23 years, you got a private office. <laughs> uh, 41 years old, been with MMC for 23 years. You got 1000 in stock options, $10,000 expense budget. You got a picture of Malcolm Farnsworth there. You got unlimited boondoggles. <laughs> I might have to put up a poll here. How many of you know what a boondoggle is? Yes, no. <laughs> Uh, cause that question's definitely come up before during these live broadcasts. Why even make a poll? <laughs> you know, Manakai. It's an interactive uh, endeavor. It's an experience. You know? Stop making me feel old. Ah, savage. It's not a matter of being old. It's a matter of just knowing shit, right? Come on. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> cool. 
cool. It's probably just a matter of, like, what sort of, like, setting you uh, work in, you know? Some folks, you know, might end up being in that corporate shit, or whatever the case. Yeah, there's the three-hour lunches. You're definitely right. Three-hour lunches. That's important. All right. A lot of you do know what a boondoggle is. I like that. That's cool. So, a pro producer from 60 Minutes wants to interview MMC about its recent acquisition. Despite seeing Behemoth Systems crucified on an earlier edition, Malcolm Farnsworth, the head of MMC, wants to go ahead with the interview. Do you do it? Do you refuse? Do you study the matter further? Or do you decide to go into early retirement? <laughs> oh man! Oh, that's a close vote between studying the matter further and early retirement. Oh, <laughs> oh it's so close. Oh, shit. Fuck this, I'm out of here. <laughs> but it looks like chat's inherent desire to want to learn more is winning out. By the way, folks, uh, if you're just new and you're just turning in, welcome to Executive Suite. Uh, this is an old game from the 1980s. Uh, this features occasionally during my broadcast marathons. Uh, whenever I do my broadcast marathons, I do like to include games uh, where chat directly uh, controls decision making. Uh, vote wins there, number three, 41%. Uh, you know, it's just it's just my way of like you know interacting and involving chat. We can have a lot of fun stuff happen along the way. I've liked to test chat on occasion, and they've won things for me in the past from Executive Suite. Uh, I ended up challenging uh, chat to actually win a game of Executive Suite, and they did. And uh, I awarded 10 people uh, from chat using the giveaway system of Hitbox, like a copy of The Political Machine on Steam. You know, I was just, I was just like, fuck it, let's do it. Uh, Executive Suite has been, a, has been a gem and a treasure. You look at the game, and it's just like, you know, it's not much. What is it? But it's a choose-your-own-adventure story. Uh, you know, the prompts don't really change. You won't see new stuff unless you actually go, like, select the different options. But, you know, so many folks just haven't seen the game, they don't really remember the option choices. Anyway, we shall study the matter further. A good try at delay, but neither CBS nor Malcolm Farnsworth will have any part of it. What a surprise. Alright, everyone. With that in mind... We're going to create another poll. Uh, option. Option one, option two, or option three in this case will count as four. Do we do it, refuse, or enter into early retirement? It looks like the story of Chucklefuck might end up being done, folks. Oh! Oh! A surge of votes for option one! Oh, shit! <laughs> People getting out of bed to hurry to the computer! <laughs> oh! Re early retirement gets beat down! Oh, that's brutal! <laughs> oh man that was great <laughs> we could have been remembered 51% <laughs> of the vote oh shit we shall do it as luck would have it you draw morally safer for this story Malcolm Farnsworth refused any speaker training, so Morley falls asleep halfway through the interview. The Salmonex you slipped into the water pitcher didn't hurt either. The segment never airs. Wow. This took a dark turn, didn't it, Chuckle Fox? <laughs> I know all that for nothing. Hello. Hello. You know, yeah. Wow. 
this is uh this is a marathon broadcast. This is the first game that we'll be featuring in this broadcast, Executive Suite. Uh, there's an itinerary below this window. All those times are in North American Eastern Standard Time. We're coming up on, well, we'll just keep this game going until we actually conclude with this game. Even if it ends up exceeding time, that's okay. The rest of the schedule can adjust. Malcolm Farnsworth returns enraged from the National Circuit Breakers Convention, where he was crucified by Circuit News Monthly because your department, oh shit, provided incorrect statistics for his speech. So, do you want to submit your resignation, cut off your typing fingers, blame research and offer to cover up, put out a contract at Elaine Pincer, we've seen that name before, the editor of Circuit News Monthly, or offer your humble apologies. Oh man, chat's so divided between numbers two and four. <laughs> Oh, number four is broken ahead. <laughs> Nuts to the fingers. We're going to put out a contract. <laughs> and these are the moments that I enjoy. You know, sometimes it depends on, like, the viewers who are participating. Sometimes chat will really hunker down and work together on a goal. And then sometimes chat will just go spiraling out of control and pick something immensely fun. You know, like when they constantly egg me on to ford every river on the Oregon Trail, even though some of them just ain't survivable. So 36% has voted for number four. We got two, we got 29% who voted for number two. Your assassins can't find Circuit News Monthly's offices. So you have no alternative but to make another selection. What the hell? We'll create another poll. <laughs> Damn you, assassins. <laughs> oh, shit. In this case, option number four is option number five. Offering our humble apologies. I know. Rather trashy assassins we ended up hiring, right? We will be remembered. You know, I just wanted to make sure you know how Chad felt, whether it still felt like cutting off the typing fingers is important. You know, it's a, it's a pretty serious judgment call, I feel. Boondoggle assassins. I, that, you know, that's right, Manakai. That's right. <laughs> Witness me, we should have retired. <laughs> I am sorry, Mr. Farnsworth. <laughs> Damn. We didn't even hire the correct assassins. <laughs> we would have retired. Uh. All right, 49% has elected. They go with option number two. You collect workers' compensation while waiting for prosthetic fingers to come in. Malcolm sends you a muzzle as a get well present. Burn! That's another thing I love about this game, too. It's got these cold, sarcastic ice burns that it will just level at you. It's like, oh, that's mean. That's cold. I love it. But hey, we're still going. We got prosthetic fingers now. <laughs> During budget reviews, you begin to hear doubts as to the value added of public relations. You must evaluate your role and value to MMC as vice president of public relations. With that in mind, you stay in your position, you downgrade to take a line job, or do you start a campaign to promote the public relations department? Because who would be better at promoting public relations than you, who you know, is the vice president of public relations, right? <laughs> how dare, how dare Beam lie to you, Ryan Truth? Back to the line. <laughs> 
Oh, man. The vote's pretty strong in favor of starting a campaign to promote the public relations department with the prosthetic fingers. Not that many people are interested in staying or downgrading. We get a level 8 job, we done. Uh, Chuckle Fox in her early 40s now. Uh, there's not that much time for advancement. So, uh, if we don't see, uh, if we're seeing 8s now, we can't go anywhere else but 8s. It'll be it. We could have gone out as heroes. Could have been a contender. Your efforts establish the public relations department as a key MMC function. You also fire your agency and blame all the bad work on them. After three years, you did an average job. You had an indecisive manner, as noted by cutting off your typing fingers rather than an effective solution. You pleased Malcolm Farnsworth for your blood sacrifice. And you had an opportunistic and self-promoting style. Economy is fair. And we're now seeing eights, folks. But hey, we're still making good coin, good bread here, and uh, and our beautiful game of executive suite. This is fuck is fucked. <laughs> With that in mind, would you like to be a Western Area Sales Manager, a Group Product Manager, a Senior Manager Engineering Projects, a Personnel Manager, a Treasurer, or a Company Controller? Fuck, you're gonna have to buy this game to rectify your sense, chat. Good luck buying it! <laughs> Love chats are easy to hear, this is great. Oh, is there a web extreme? Oh, is there actually one built into the web? Holy shit. Be like, oh, let me go see that. Executive Suite Game. I'll be damned, it's on archive.org. Ah, how about that? Yeah. Well, that's cool. You ever want to play the game yourself and don't have it like I do? There you go. You can play it on the old archive.org website. Alright, 51% of the vote. Says Treasurer. Ooh. So, uh. So, uh, you folks remember, uh. that extravagant taste whenever you decided to expand the main plant? Instead of adding something like a third shift? Or the Jason Parlay guy. Doesn't matter. You're still good to be treasurer. 44 years old is Mrs. Chucklefuck. After 26 years, make a 99 grand per year out of the six digits. Still get three hour lunches though. No more unlimited boondoggles though. You get several telephone messages on your way to lunch of the Executive Vice President of Brooks DuPont, who is not a patient man. So, you want to call your bond trader? You want to call MMC's corporate break banker? You want to call both of them or return neither call? So will you go down with this ship, chat? Or uh, will you decide to... Uh, just fight valiantly and remain firm in MMC's tender clutches until the age of retirement, which is like in another 20-ish years. Cut off all our fingers and use the blood ticket. We already did that. You know, that's fair. If you want to go down with the ship, that's perfectly cool. And that's perfectly fine. Also, I know I sound like a regular broadcast. Like, I'm just like squawking and repeating messages. But uh, I know that uh, I'm fairly new to Beam still. And uh, a lot of folks are just peeping in for the first time. Especially seeing how many viewers this has. So for all you lurkers or folks who aren't participating in chat. Hi, Grimoth. 
Uh, welcome to Let's Get On With It. This is the second of uh, two marathons I'm holding this week. Uh, I got a variety of games up. Executive Suite is uh, one of them, an interactive thing. So, 32% of the audience has voted to call both of them and tell Brooks DuPont to get fucked. The bond market is collapsing, the bank has pulled MMZ's credit line, and the executive vice president, tired of waiting, has gone to lunch and left you to your misery. <laughs> so! I know what option you folks are going to pick here. This is great. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> First, Novo Bank pulls MMC's credit line because of filing irregularities. Do you plead with the bank, hope the accounts receivable come in, go back to your old bankers, jump out the window, or go to the mob for a loan? And as I figured, the choice between four and five is strong. Blink Killer is noting that four is a dud. We have done that. Not on this playthrough, of course, but, uh... <laughs> uh perhaps it has been done before. Still, chat wants to see that number four option at work, damn it. Uh, it's all right. Executive suite is perfectly okay. I, you're, you're right, though. I could. Just, it's no big deal. Like, <laughs> I can have executive suite be the number one trending game on Beam. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with it being unlisted. No worries or troubles. All right, 47%. But thank you for, thank you for bringing that up. That is a, certainly something that can be done on Beam. We're going to try jumping out the window, everyone. The drop from your first floor office only caused a sprained ankle. Limp along to personnel at their request. Now obviously, things aren't going your way to MMC, Chuckle. With trepidation, you open the top envelope in your morning mail. Dear Chuckle, For the desk of Malcolm Farnsworth III, MMC regrets to say that you and MMC must part company. In a less people-oriented company, you would be fired. Causes for this parting include, among the top, costly solutions to problems, not standing your ground under pressure, your pessimistic outlook, and putting off the powerful Joy Stern. Finance will give you an accounting of your worth as you leave MMC. Fairly truly yours, Malcolm Farnsworth III. That is the value here. $99,000 annual salary with a $5,000 personal expense budget, title of treasurer, $50,000 on life insurance, $50,000 private office, company car, garage parking, other perks. Our work status was fired from MMC, which subtracts from our value. We didn't have much of a family line, so we didn't have much there. And a current age of 44, leaving us with a value of $484,000. Hit the road, Jack. Beautiful, right? Majestic. Well, chat, pretty much fit in with our time frame. That's executive suite. You got up to job level 10, folks. It's, it's not bad. It's not the best, though. It all just sort of fell apart there at the end. By Ryan Truth, take care. I'll be broadcasting for quite some time, of course. Executive suite is only the first of several games I plan on playing today. And who knows, if a game that I planned on trying out doesn't work out, we might very well just come back to Executive Suite. Gray Flannel Fun and your friends at MMC wish you well in the real world or on your next attempt at the Executive Suite. Ah, what a treat, everyone. <laughs> I do consider this to be a good fun game. I mean, it's all text-based, but uh, you can always use the vivid imagination there and establish your own vendettas among the names sprinkled around. See you later. Thanks for coming along on the ride. <laughs> hey, Shaman. Shaman. You missed it Monday, but we were playing Oregon Trail, and we came across your tombstone. 
uh, in Oregon Trail 1.2, where we lamented that all of your friends died in the Blue River. It was great. Of course, that run ended uh, as well in failure. But yeah, just wanted to note that with you. Let's go ahead and turn off Executive Suite. I said turn off Executive Suite. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go on a little break time right now. Gives me an opportunity to stretch my bones. So I don't get too burned out as we're switching between various games. I hope you folks enjoyed yourself while playing Executive Suite. Uh, if not, well, I mean, you didn't have to stay around for as long as you did. We got other things that are coming up, though, that are going to be exciting and enjoyable. Let me see if I can do an awesome, cool, wicked, sick transition here. I said awesome.